Today we are going to talk about uh, AS Roma under 17 game model, principles of coaching and methodology. Uh, what I want to say straight away that uh, one of the best things I, I uh, happened to me uh, two years ago when I first uh, came uh, at AS Roma was to realize that uh, the principles, the, the philosophy behind the, the coaching, behind the methodology, uh, was exactly uh, the same that I always um, believed in. And uh, I think this is the best thing that can happen to uh, any coach uh, that uh, join a new environment. So it was uh, easy for me to, to, to adapt straight away to, to the environment. And uh, uh, this helped me a lot to, to do my job uh, at the best. Uh, I would like to start with a, with a short uh, introduction of myself and my very quickly. Uh, so I started to coach in uh, 2003 in a local club where I was uh, playing when I, when I ended my playing career uh, as a youth coach. And uh, after a couple of years, I had a great opportunity to, to join a, a top club in Italy, FC and Inter, Inter Milan, um, for a project that uh, brought me uh, in many countries in the world. So I, I had the chance to to, to learn for, from, uh, from other coaches, other cultures, to learn a bit of English. And uh, <clears throat> that was one of the turning points of my career, to be honest. I went back to Italy, where I became head coach of a fourth uh, tire club in Italy. Uh, that was my first uh, uh, taste of adult football. Uh, after a couple of years, I, may, I had the, the big chance of my career because uh, in a coaching course, I, I was lucky to, to, to be amongst uh, many top, top uh, ex-players. One of them was uh, Paolo Di Canio. And uh, after the course, uh, he offered me to join him uh, uh, as an assistant manager. And we, we went to England uh, for two years in, uh, in one small club in the, in the fourth tier um, of the English football, Swindon Town FC. And then uh, after a couple of years, where, which were quite successful, to, to be honest, and we went to uh, one, uh, one top club like uh, Sunderland in the Premier League. Uh, that was, of course, the peak of my, of my career in, in, a, in a way. So, um, then uh, after a couple of years, I started to, to, to walk with my, my, on my feet and uh, go, I went to Portugal in the second division as, as a first team coach. Then back to Italy, uh, again in a youth uh, academy with Sampdoria. Uh, then once again, I went abroad uh, and I went to Finland where I joined a, a, a top club uh, there called the Inter Turku, first as a first team coach. And then uh, I became a head coach there uh, for, for two years, basically. And uh, two years ago, I had this chance to come back to Italy uh, and uh, with, with this call that I got from uh, AS Roma. And uh, since two years ago, I, I'm a head coach at, uh, of the under 17. I am a pro license coach uh, since 2016, and I got my pro license uh, with the Scottish FA. Um, and uh, again, I'm grateful to to Scotland because they they were uh, hosting me, and I learned a lot in this uh, in this course. So, a uh, bit of my my ideas, uh, my my background. Uh, I, I have been, uh, I've been a, a player in my career, but I, I never reached the top level of football. So I was quite average as a, as a player. I was a midfielder. Um, when I, in, during my last few years, years of uh, career, I, I started to, to think more about the, the principles of coaching because uh, like everyone, we are not very interested in, uh, as a players, in what uh, what uh, the coach wants and what the coach thinks. We are more interested in playing, and that's it for us. But uh, during in the last few years, I started to think more about 
the dynamics of the of the training sessions what uh, we we did uh, how wh why we, we we do something and and so on mm, and uh, uh, even if I, if my my the most of of my uh, coaching career has, has been spent with uh, old players, first team players, uh, I have always had a great passion for uh, for uh, youth uh, football, especially for the the dynamics and the, the principles that um, underline the, the methodology uh, of learning. Uh, after almost almost 20 years of coaching I, I realized that football is not something we teach but is something that the players uh, learn uh, which means that as a coaches we the best thing we can do is to prepare and create the, the conditions for the players to to learn football and uh, okay uh, <clears throat> Uh, now I want to start more uh, to talk more about uh, the methodology that uh, we we follow the guidelines that we follow at S Roma, which, as I said before, are the same that has always uh, guided my my idea, my philosophy in in coaching. Um, we we always say that uh, at S Roma the focus is on the player. Whatever we do, whatever we uh, we think, we talk, we share with the others, everything, every single uh, uh, energy is, is uh, driven to uh, improve the players, the single player. Because if football uh, is like every 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 sport is every team sport is not the team that make the top but the players so not all the players are are, are going to to make it the professional football so we have to understand and to to to, to be able to uh, to take the players to the best so this is why the, the focus is on the players and around the player we we build something that we can uh, define in six let's say six macro macro areas uh, which are briefly and then i will go more in the details the first one is the game model and i will tell you after why the game model is the is the first uh, in the in this uh, sequence the tactical principles which are basically the tools that we use to 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 work inside this uh, game model the technical tools uh, Myself and uh, anyway at S Roma, we think that technical tools uh, we call them technical tools because techniques is in in football are not something that are good for themselves, but they they are tools to solve football problems. Cognitive and emotional skills, educational tools, and of course the th strength and conditioning work. So. Uh, all these areas are not something that we have to uh, work separately but as coaches we have to understand that every uh, area is strictly connected to to the others so uh, the, the 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 definition is just a conventional because in reality uh, we work everything we do with the players and with the team is always related uh, continue, continuously connected with the others area, with the other areas. Uh, so, starting from uh, from the game mode, uh, Sean, uh, is it is all clear so far? Fine. Okay. So, just to make sure that I'm not talking my <laughs> my own. Okay. Uh, starting with the game model, I I gave a definition of game model. Um, it's the whole set of individual and collective behaviors during the different moments of the game. Uh, it's what we call the identity of the team. I, I want to highlight this concept. It is not the system of play. So when we talk about game model, we are not talking about systems like 4-4-2, 4-3-3, 3-5-2 and so on. Uh, that is secondary. Uh, the game model is something that can before the system and i will explain better what we what we uh, mean 
uh, one thing, it must be, this, this game model, it must be clear, understandable and engaging for the players. Uh, we all know that football, how adult football has just one, one uh, target. We have to win games with adults. With the, with the young players, of course, according to the club and um, the level, of course, we want, we wish to win games, but my, our first uh, aim is to improve the players, to, to make sure that the players uh, improve. Um, for this reason, for, for a, in the game model for a youth uh, team has to be clear, understandable and engaging for the players. Engaging means that the players have to feel it like something where, as I, as I wrote afterwards, uh, they should perceive it as a playing environment in which to explore their own abilities and develop their own learning process. Uh, how can I build a, a game model that can, uh, has to be engaging for the players? Uh, in my opinion, in, in my club, we have, we have the privilege to have players that are very selected, so qual um, qualitative players, um, and I have uh, my, my task, my main task is to make sure that the players uh, find the environment, the right environment for them. I can't ask my players to, to defend, uh, just defending uh, and chasing people around. No, I have to, to create a game model for my players that uh, uh, is good for them because they know that um, they can be um, stars of the, play, of the game. They can be protagonists, they can dominate the game, they can be uh, themselves, they can uh, express totally their own, their own uh, abilities. Um, how can so, uh, how we build this game model? At S Roma, we have some guidelines that um, define what we want from our game model. Uh, again, before, before the, the um, tactical principles, there are uh, some character characteristics that this game model have, have to, to be. Uh, one is the rational occupation of the space. So no matter the system, no matter the, um, the positions, but we have to make sure that our players learn how to occupy the space of the, of the, on the field, according to the situation of the game. We have to control the core of the game. This means that uh, we want uh, as much as we can our players to be able to uh, control and with the possession, the, the, the core of the field, uh, because we think, and I think personally, that uh, all the teams that play just square passes, they, they never uh, go forward with the ball. So a possession that is just uh, for his uh, its sake, not for the sake of penetrating the opponent's lines, is, is ineffective. And the vertical possession is strictly related to the previous uh, principle because, again, a, a possession that is not um, leading to, to, to winning space ahead is just a, a waste of time. It's just a waste of time. And the pace of the game, our players must learn, have to understand this different pace um, of the game, the different moments where to keep the ball, where to play quick, where to play one touch, where to, to, uh, to play two touches. And this is something they can learn only through coaching. It's, uh, it's, the, it's not enough to explain, it's not enough to talk. And after, we, I, will, uh, I will explain more what I mean. So the first, first few couple of videos that I want to show is just um, to to show uh, on the field, on the pitch, what uh, I mean uh, talking about principle. So, for example, this first video is the, if you have the list uh, of, on YouTube, uh, on my channel, there is this video number 16, and I will show you, it's just 20 seconds, not more than 20 seconds. Uh, this shows all, of course, all the 
all the clips that you are going to watch tonight are all about my team. Uh, last of last season, group of last season or this season. Uh, it's not important, but principles are the same. In this few clip, first clip, you can see what I mean talking about vertical possession. I will let the, the clip flow. So as you can see, the, the ball is always moved backwards and forwards and trying to win space ahead. The second, the second clip I want to show you is this number 18. And I love this specific, I want to uh, make a, like a forward on this clip. Um, this is a clip from a game uh, that we played a um, couple of months ago. Um, in this clip, in one minute, there is almost everything we, uh, I want to, to talk about the game model, because here there is the type of uh, possession that we want to express, um, the position understanding, the um, co concept of winning the ball back quickly, which I will uh, talk more later. Um, and this is good because it shows a lot of our game model. I, I, I will let the... So we are the red team. Uh, bit confused, a bit of confusion, but as soon as we regain the possession, we try to retain the ball and start from the back. Here you can see why we want to play inside the field. We are not moving the ball uh, on, the, on, on the sides, but always trying to, to find the player that is behind the, the first opponent uh, line of uh, the defense. If we, we, if we lose the ball in the last third, we try to win it back straight away, defending forward and we rebuild. The center backs try always to keep the ball inside. And that is what I meant before talking about the control the core of the field and playing a vertical possession. Okay, that that was the those were the, um, the 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 things that define the game model uh, in possession. Then, um, of course, non-possession. Again, we have uh, uh, principles that are always um, the key of of our of our game model. So, um, defensively, we always um, put high pressure against the opponent's build-up. So we don't let the opponent uh, build easy. And if, of course, the first pressure uh, doesn't work, we always try to defend the central area of the pitch. So uh, like we want the opponents, uh, like we want to play through lines and dominate the core of the pitch, we want the opponent to don't do the same. So we try always to, to block the, the core of the, of the field and force the opponent to play wide. There is one, uh, again, one short clip to show that shows our uh, way to press high uh, is the uh, clip number 22. And this shows how we press high. We try to regain the ball higher on the field. And then from there, we build a, one new um, playing action, attacking action. So that specifically led to a goal that we scored, but it, that is not important. It's more about the, the way we press. And during transitions, of course, the first idea when we, when we lose the ball is to try to win it back as soon as possible. Of course, uh, there are different moments of the game and different uh, areas of the game of the of the field where we can do that for sure when we lose the ball in the last third we always try to win it back straight away 
uh, pressing forward and from there trying to finish um, in goal as, as, as soon as possible. Uh, when we regain the ball uh, in uh, areas of the field uh, deeper, we the players have to understand and to learn how to read the situation. If they can counter attack, if they can, or if they have just to to keep the ball and reshuffle the ball to to prepare a new a new attacking action. Again, a uh, couple of uh, video clips that shows that show these uh, two principles. So, for example, we can start with uh, this number twenty seven. This clip number twenty seven which show, shows uh, a transi transition uh, deeper on the field. So we are the red team, we just won the ball, we try to, to play it through, we lost the ball and in this situation we regroup and we try to win it back later because this is um, more difficult to, to cope with uh, with uh, this kind of situation uh, the next one is the number 19 and this shows uh, the ball lost in the final third and that is completely different from uh, the previous one we are the white team we try to attack the attack didn't uh, didn't go well but straight away we try to press forward and win the ball back that is one of the main um, tool that we use with our players. Um, in these two clips there is something different. So um, what we ask the players to do when we win the ball, so this is a attacking transition, positive transition, but we win the ball uh, near, close to our, our uh, box. So uh, when we are deep on the field. So number 20 and number 21 show what I mean. So we are the white team, we won the ball almost in, a, in our box and the principle is give support, numeric, numerical support to the player that won the ball back and try to, to move the ball quickly. Don't keep the ball in your feet by, but, but move it quickly around the, the field and try to find a space. In another part of the field. Then, sorry, number 21, similar to the different game but same principle. We are the red team here, we, we, we defend deep with the back four, we won the ball and the players try to keep the ball, giving support to the, um, to the teammates and try to maintain uh, the possession until we find a way to to go out from the, the opponent pressure. So these are the um, some clips that show the game model in in its uh, um, key areas. <clears throat> okay, let's talk about the principles because uh, to to create the game model to to build the game model, our players have to understand the principles that underline this uh, these game models so what um i i will uh, tonight because of course we have just uh one hour and a half for anyway i will focus more on principles in possession um i want to start with this uh five four um four point main points which are builders and invaders i will uh, explain later what i mean reading the space and moving accordingly, density in the regaining areas, and positional understanding and interchangeability. So starting with the, the first uh, point, builders and invaders. Uh, this concept is, uh, of course, is not new in football, but the definition that we gave to this concept is uh, related to the tasks that the different players have during the build-up. Um, it's not about positions is about tasks what i want to what i mean uh, that there are not players that are um, um, that 
always the same players that build and other players that are uh, not involved in the build up. Depends on the opponent, depends on what the opponents do and how they press and so on. So I will show something to explain better. If we watch together the video number one, I will wait a couple of seconds and I will explain. In this game, we are the red team. I want to explain better the, the, this concept of builders and invaders. Uh, the, the, the more players, the more opponents press, the more will be our builders. Because if the opponents press in two or three, we need just one player more. And this player more can be also the goalkeeper. So this clip will show what I mean. So there are players that have the task to build and to prepare the attack. Like in this moment, I stop this. And you can see that I, I put this yellow circle on a few players which are our builders. There are three yellow players that are not pressing, really pressing, but still they're trying to, to shield our, our action. And in this moment, I need at least one more player. So four players trying to build plus the goalkeeper that is not, who is not involved now, but still if we need, if we need him, he, he will become a builder as well. The other players, we call them invaders, are players that are not involved in the in the first build up and their their task is to search for a empty space um, where to receive the, the the ball once the builders find the space to play forward and this is not about positions because if you can uh, see uh, on our on this on the left uh, in our, on our left there is this number 3 who is a left back but in this moment he, and, uh, he went to occupy a space, and this uh, uh, wing back, uh, sorry, this um, winger is a bit deeper than him. But anyway, they are trying to occupy the space using the width and the depth of the field, and always try to um, occupy the space between the lines. I will let the clip go. This this uh, action this didn't didn't lead to anything if I'm not wrong, but it's not important. Is the is the concept that counts? In this uh, video number two, if you want to 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 watch this video, is a different game. Uh, where the pressure of the opponent is a bit uh, more intense. And in this situation, you will see that also the goalkeeper is a builder because there is the, the need for him to, to, to join the build-up and more pressure, more builders. And still, the idea is to try to keep the ball with uh, uh, calmness don't uh, don't rush don't get panicked because of the opponent pressure because what we'll try to teach to our players that uh, if uh, you want to play for s roma you have to to be able to 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 cope with this kind of pressure with no rush and try to in trying to find the right the right moment and the right space to to go forward now we try to keep the ball, we, we lose it at some point, but still with the, with, the, with the same principles, always trying to not to, to play square passes and now finding the, the space and from this moment on trying to attack the opponent line. So this is uh, again one um, main tool of, of uh, this game model. Um, I will go straight away with number video number four, which is 
it's important to show once again what does it mean to bring players in the regaining area to support the players that lost the ball that won the ball back uh, in this clip we are the team in uh, orange oh sorry i made a mess okay is the clip number four now you can see the orange players are players to win the ball and then under pressure trying to don't uh, don't kick the ball away by but always trying to keep it and release the opponent's pressure and this is good also because give the player a lot of self-esteem because they know that by doing this yes a little bit risky but they will uh, always uh, go out from the pressure and every time they succeed in my opinion they they get a bit more self-esteem. That is what we what we want uh, for them. Mm. This clip, uh, which is this number five bis, I want to show this because uh, uh, this clip uh, show a lot of what I mean when I talk about positional understanding and uh, uh, interchangeability. What, what we mean with this, we want our players not to learn how to play in a different position. I mean, we know that a centre-back will always be a centre-back and the, and the striker will, will always be a striker. But what we want is that our players read the right space and uh, once they, they are in that specific uh, area of the pitch, they can perform... Uh, according to to that uh, position even if you are if you are if you are if they are not um, they don't for example a full back like in this sorry okay in this clip 5 bis i show our full backs if you can see now i put a circle on the left back and the right and the right back because I want I want you to see at the end of this action with uh, which position they will uh, they will take so the, the the action the build up goes forward now the player has been good to to release the first pressure and now you can see the position of the two fullbacks in this moment, they are playing almost as a midfielders because they saw that the, the, the width of the pitch were already occupied by, by teammates and they went to occupy different, different, the right space. It's not anymore about uh, roles and positions left back full back um, winger is about occupying the right the right space at the right moment uh, okay let's go forward and okay i of course I, I i i did it quite quickly because now i want to sh to talk more about the coaching structure which is what we all prefer to to understand so um at S Roma, of course, we have a gui uh, some guidelines that goes from under 15 to under 19, uh, and basically uh, are the same for uh, the whole the, all the teams. And there are some details and differences about, of course, according to the age of the players. But the key uh, lines, the key principles are the same. So, uh, in our coaching structure, we work on these three areas tactical periodization the contents of the session and the extra session activities uh, talking about periodization uh, we talk about tactical periodization not tactical technical and physical because again uh, if we assume if we if we agree that from the game model everything uh, goes uh, following the game model of course, we talk about technical and, and physical. 
So basically, the our uh, week is uh, um, structured in this way as follows: Monday we you, we play on uh, on Sunday. Monday we use uh, this day to rest, of course, the, uh, the players that have played uh, the most, and uh, we use Monday to um, uh, make some extra sessions for players that didn't play or play a bit less the day before, or players that need some extra work on uh, technical aspects, because usually uh, in the, during the week, in the weeks, in the weekly sessions, I never play, uh, work analytical, I never do analytical uh, technical works with players. I will tell you straight away, I don't believe in uh, analytical work. Uh, I believe in uh, uh, other things that I will tell more, but we, we of course, we, we want the players to improve technically uh, and the club wants to um, dedicate extra time to, to this aspect. Also, we work a lot on what we call personal coaching. So it's not only about working technically with the players, but sometimes a player that work with uh, uh, individually with the coach uh, can build a, also a good relationship. We can care more about a player, a single player, and this is the, the another uh, important moment for him. Tuesday is the first day of the se of the week, and uh, I work on possession and negative transition, so defensive transition. Why? Because if we work on possession, I have to the players have to understand that. Uh, possession can lead to success or can lead to lose the ball and they have to understand how to cope with the loss of possession uh, and spe specifically on Tuesday we work on um, build up from the back but uh, I will uh, go in the details later Wednesday the second game the day of the week we work on non-possession positive transition Thursday back again on possession and defensive transition. Friday, uh, non-possession and positive transition. Saturday, we don't always train on Saturday, not always, but when we do that, we work sometimes on set pieces and how to, to cope against of opponent um, set pieces. The contents, the contents of the of the sessions so we work on individual tactical principles unit tactical principles and collective tactical principles plus the technical tools so uh, during the week during my training sessions i of course i work on technical but uh, everything is always always related to to the game so i'm not working on analytical uh, technicals techniques how uh, so there is the breakdown of the of the uh, single session uh, the first day as i said we i work on build up from the back uh, how to handle the pressure from the opponents trying to cut lines as i show on the video clips before so playing always to with the aim to cut the the opponent's mm, lines creating and occupying free spaces where to receive the ball, which is, uh, again, one of the key uh, areas of the player's improvement because they have to understand how to read the space, where to go, when to go, which speed uh, to use. Because sometimes to, to receive the, the ball in an empty space means to stay, to stand because maybe the opponent has moved and you have just to stand. So it's not always about moving, but it's about reading the, the space. Finding the free player behind the line of pressure and coping with this possession in zone one. Zone one, for in our communication, in our keywords at S Roma, the, the zone one is uh, the first third of the pitch. So the area of the first build up. The second day, we work on defend, defending principles uh, and, uh, okay, back for work. I think personally that the only moment where we can really work on a specific unit 
is the back for work because all the other areas of the of the game model have to be coached with the with the whole uh, team or to, um, involving all the positions um, but the back four work is something that you can work, we can work as a unit uh, for the midfielder and, and attackers we work on shielding and intercepting um, man marking of course the players have to understand how to mark a man how to keep the distance the right distance to 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 control his opponent then of course we work on positive transition in uh, in uh, when we defend a bit more deep like we watched before uh, how can i uh, what can i uh, what I, I have to do once i want the ball can i counter or do i have to retain the, the possession um, and of course working on retaining possession or quick counter attacks uh, day three of course again we are back to possession but now is about keeping preparing the attack and trying to create goal scoring opportunities uh, create uh, understand how to unbalance the opponent's defense changing the point of attack and again uh, working on the Mm, the possibility because it can happen of course often uh, to lose the ball what we do if we lose the ball uh, in the in the middle area what we do if we we lose the ball in the last third so again is about aggression quick aggression to win the ball back or slowing opponents counter attack inverted pressing uh, this is a key word for uh, that we use in uh, in our uh, youth sec academy the inverted pressing is if my opponents beat me, beat me in 1v1 and start to drive the ball to my goal, I have to run and chase it back and try to pressing from, from, uh, from, uh, from the back. Once And then the last one is coping with numerical disadvantage at the back. What does it mean? That um, when we, uh, we are preparing our attack and we are playing the last third of the field we all often we leave just the two center backs at the back even if the opponents leave uh, leave uh, two players so we accept the the numerical um, uh, parity so two against two and our players our center backs have to uh, have to learn how to cope with uh, for example a long ball playing a 2v2 and this is something that helped them to not only count on their uh, unit, on their teammates, but all, also to count on their individual uh, ability to, to, to handle the situation. The for, uh, day four, we work on high pressing, so how to press the opponent's build up and forcing and orienting the opponent's build up. So we always want the opponents to, mm, most of the times, uh, sometimes we change according to the game plan, but 90% uh, of the times we force the opponent to play uh, wide, to play on the flanks, because we think, and I think that uh, from a defensive point of view, it's much easier to defend when the ball is uh, wide rather than when the ball is uh, inside. Uh, we try to win the ball high up on the field, and as I said before, we shield at the core of the pitch for the reasons I, I just mentioned. And if we win the ball, in that situation, we try to counter quickly using the center of the field. Because we, we assume, and I think we all agree, that if the opponents are building up and we press them, normally in that situation, they are quite open because the back four are open because they want to open the play and if we win the ball in that situation, if we bring the ball on the sides, we give the chance and the time to the opponents to, to, re, to, re, to regroup and to, and to control the, the ball. So we have to move it quickly and don't keep it, but just moving the ball from, uh, with one, two touches. If we, can, if we cannot uh, create a goal scoring opportunity straight away, we have to uh, rebuild a finishing opportunity. 
I, I want, I will not talk about the, the set pieces because uh, it's not that, in my opinion, at the moment, it's not that uh, interesting. Uh, I want to talk now about this concept, which is one of the, in my opinion, the, the most important uh, principles that we have to take in account uh, during our coaching uh, sessions, during our planning. Uh, space of decisions and space of reactions. Uh, what does it mean? Football is a f is is totally different from a, a, a soccer. How you call this? Uh, uh, how you call it in the uh, United States? Uh, soccer is a totally different uh, game compared to other games, like for example baseball. I'm Italian, but I love baseball. Uh, I also in, many years ago I, I played couple of games I know the rules and if you think about baseball baseball is a game where let's say in in one action so from starting let's say two minutes one minute before the pitcher uh, throw the ball is all about decisions so uh, there are a lot there is a lot of time where the players all the players involved can think about what they want to do, uh, how to pitch, how to receive for the catcher, um, which kind of ball uh, uh, will be thrown. Uh, the, the, if we want to play a, um, uh, a specific a spe specific action and so on. Once the ball leaves the um, pitcher glove, for that it's about reactions. So everything starts to, to, to rush and it's all about reactions because the batter react to the, to the, to the ball. Uh, the players, the outfield players have to react according to where the ball has, has been uh, hit and so on. Uh, other sports, as you can think, is an alternance of decisions and reactions. Football is decisions and reactions, but you never know when you will have to think or when you will have to react. And this is not something that the players have to be aware. It's us ourselves as coaches that we have to know that there is this kind of uh, situations and we have to coach them both. And we have to know when to coach something or when we are coaching something and when, when we are coaching something else. I want to show uh, a clip to, to explain better. Is the clip number six? Um, I want to talk a bit about, about it. This is an, a, 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 tip, a typical action, football action. Again, once again, is our one of our games. And if you can think, uh, you will you will see that in the first part of this action, it's all about decisions because the players in possession, which are uh, my players with the red shirt, are, have the time and space to decide what to do with the ball. I start. Okay, let's watch the, the clip and then we can, I, I can talk a bit more later. So every player has not a great pressure, no, may, maybe not great, even no pressure from the opponents. The white players, are all this deciding what to do, how to sh to go uh, to press and so on. Now, check. Okay. In this moment, there are players. So one player, the the player, uh, my player who have received the, this uh, this uh, ball, who is uh, in the, the opponent's box with three or four players around him is not anymore in the space of decisions. He, can't, he, is, he cannot think what to do. He has just to react. To react to what? To the, to the, to the environment. So he has to perceive rather than think. He has to perceive the white shirt around him. He has to perceive which uh, teammates are be, uh, close to him, which team, teammates are far from him. But it's not about thinking, it's about reacting. All the other players, all the other players uh, with the circles around, I put them 
in this space of decisions because all these players have the time and the space and the privilege i would say to think what to do so the striker think do i have to attack the near post do i have to attack the center of the the, the goal the the winger on the left can think do i have to attack the far post what i want to do uh, the, the midfielder think is thinking do i have to go uh, to make a run in, in the box for a rebound the, def the defenders my defenders have to think uh, do i have to mark the, the man who has remained up front and so on so this is something that happens every time in football in soccer as coaches we have to uh, know that during a training session we can't ask a player to think when he has just to react and the same otherwise we can't uh, tell a player you are not thinking uh, while we <laughs> while he needs to react so going forward i i told this because this is the main uh, key for our coaching sessions okay this is something i i i stolen from a, an a, an american guy trevor reagan i don't know if any uh, someone of you call, uh, know about trevor reagan trevor reagan is a is a uh, an american guy who uh, studies the motor learning and uh, i will uh, i hope i i advise anyone that uh, to to go on the internet and search for for uh, his uh, website um these principles of motor learning uh, are what the uh, underline my idea of coaching so um specificity so you have to uh, coach and you have to create coaching session that are closer to the uh, to the reality of the game the contextual interference so we can't uh, claim that uh, the the the, co the, um, the players can understand if they are not coping with the difficulties of the game so we can't coach the drill we have to coach the players so i i'm not interested in creating a nice drill or a uh, after the session i thinking ah everything went flowing went well no i don't I, i'm not interested in it. i just need to um, create the conditions even tough conditions but to make sure that the players are coping with the reality of the game how can i do that uh, with this third point random practice against block practice random practice is a uh, is what leads to the uh, long-term uh, retention of learning so the block practice is easier for the players so i can uh, teach a player how to to pass the ball but with if i do that without uh, opponents without the real context i i'm i can't uh, think that he's improving as a player he will be better in uh, doing something um disconnected by the game but i have to make sure that all the players learn how to do something related with the game uh, so again whole against the part learning through the, the the whole game scenario is much better than learning through small parts of it we can still and i will show you later we we can still coach parts of the game but to to make sure that the players know exactly how to perform in the game we can we know that the a small part can't be enough and the last part which is uh, important too is to know that the mistakes are part of the improvement so nobody is uh, uh, is, is born doing so, uh, being able to do to do something we 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 work we learn through mistakes and mistakes have to be accepted not of course not encouraged but not demonized 
so I can't blame a player for uh, making a mistake. I have to uh, accept it as part of the of the of the learning process. Uh, talking about random practice, talking about random practice, we can still split the, the random practice in two different um, groups of, sesh, of drills, which are uh, important too, so both important, but we have to understand that one uh, specific um, group of drills can help us help the players to to do something and the other can help the players to do the whole so starting from this situational bottom up so we are talking about situational uh, coaching so basically in other terms in other words the random practice so i call the bottom up approach when we start with the basic situation because we have in mind the final outcome so we know what we want to uh, what we want to achieve but we we work step by step and the players understand uh, through this uh, um, steps and rehearse rehearse and until they reach the the, the final the final uh, um, concept uh, some examples of bottom up these three videos, the video number seven, for example, I want to explain and I want to make a, a, a small a small forward. So why and how and when these uh, drills are important? Um, the bottom, in my opinion, bottom up uh, um, approach is useful when we want to uh, create in the players the right behavior or we want to correct a wrong behavior so we are not uh, working on specific uh, principles of the of our game model but for example we want to create like a mindset in the player i i want to to explain this drill for example Sometimes it happened that we, we have to work in a small pitch with a few, maybe not um, a big number of players. And this specific drill that I'm going to show you, uh, I worked on this concept. My center back, and this is related to what I, uh, I, I showed before, that I want the, the, um, to dominate the core of the field. In this specific drill, I force the two center backs to play through the lines, to play in front of them, even if it's a bit more risky, but I, I'm in this moment I'm forcing them to create the, this kind of mindset, which will uh, help them during the, the session, during the games. So in this specific drill, I, I um, the the blue team lack uh, is lacking the fullbacks. So the two center backs. Can cope only can um, can count only with the, to the, um, on the goalkeeper and the players in front of them. So they have always to try and, and keep the ball centrally. And the red players have to press and try to win the ball. So it's realistic. I'm not asking the red players to let the game go goes, but try to do it. Uh, realistically, trying to win the back the the ball. And this is something we can do with a few players because work in a game rate related scenario doesn't we um, we don't need always to have twenty two players. We can do something similar with less players, but we are not. Um, depowering the the, the, uh, the the session we are just uh, re we, we just reduce the the um, the situation the structure of the situation this is a one, one example another example is the clip uh, i will use this number 25 which is clear when i want 
when I want to, and I do this every single week, because as I said before, I want the players to try to keep the ball uh, in the possession have to be vertical. I don't want the players to play square passes which don't lead uh, anywhere. So this is a normal ball possession with directions. So there are no goals, just a possession where the, the teams have to reach the end line, an end zone. For example, you can see now the blue players and you will see the blue players and also the green players when they have the ball, try always to, to search for a ball that cut through. They, of course, they sometimes play wide, but if they don't have other options, but the idea is always to try and play through the lines. Try to cut opponents with one pass. And again, this is not completely related to the game, but still is something that helps the players to achieve, uh, to create a mindset, which is playing vertical. The second part, which is in my opinion the most important one, is the situational top-down. Still a random practice, but this um, includes not, again, not all the parts, not all the, the whole game scenario, otherwise we, we should always have 20, uh, 11 against 11. But in this kind of um, drills, we create the real game scenario. The players get the information they need to solve the situation from the game itself. Our ability as coaches is to understand that in this kind of drills, anything can happen. And we have to observe and to understand that if the, the players have reacted or thought in the right uh, way and in a coherent way according to the game model. We have to reinforce when something has been uh, uh, done well or to correct if we have to correct. Um, some example for example the first one is this video number nine i want to show this this is a typical session i do in the day one so on the tuesday when i work on the build up from the back once again i'm not giving the players solutions but they know that we have principles the principle is i have to the players in possession as much as he can as to keep the ball inside of the field uh, in the center and the other players have to try and find the space to receive if you see this v uh, clip oh, sorry 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 okay is then video number nine Okay. So the blue players have to uh, build up and try to to go through the the white players and reach the halfway line. They will try to to build up. Now I want to you to watch this pass at. 16 seconds, I want you to, to focus on this pass and I tell you why. So in this moment, the center back who have received the ball from, uh, from uh, the goalkeeper can't find a pass forward and play the ball and pass the ball to, the, to his teammate with, who is uh, a little bit wide. This player received the pass, received the ball, instead of um, open the reception and, and play again wide and be under pressure of the whites, make something that normally is considered risky in football, but I don't care because the situation requires that kind of pass. And he passed the ball, square pass inside the field to his teammate that 
find the space, and then from that pass, we, the blue players, um, find a way to go forward. So a risky pass, but a right decision made made the, the difference. Now I want to you to watch this number twenty six video number twenty six. This video is uh, from a game, and happened a similar thing. And the player, my player number four, made the same decision. Different player, but the, the, the same decision. So from a pressure of the opponent, he played a, a square pass in front of our box. But that was uh, that was the correct the correct uh, the right uh, the right decision for me. And this happened because if we do this, if we play this way during the the, the coaching the, the, the training sessions, the player. Uh, get this in their mind. We don't need to uh, create something uh, structured to, to make this happen. If happens, the players will, will, uh, will teach from the, the situation itself. I hope I, I, I'm clear. Sometimes my English... This video number 10 is the same, the same uh, session, same situation, but now I want you to show something that for me is the key of this kind of uh, idea of coaching. So in this moment, we work on build up from the back. The players know that their main, main uh, task is to build up and reach the, the, um, the target, which is bringing the ball in the, in the middle area. But something can happen. In this situation, what? What, what happened? The blue players lost the ball. And nobody can, can see, can foresee if the ball will be lost, like now. Now, the, the white players win the ball, and now see the reaction of the blue players. They try to win it back, they win the ball, and then they go, they make a, an attacking transition from this situation, which is something I didn't, I didn't ask, I didn't ex expect before. But the importance of this uh, coaching philosophy is that you don't know what's, what can happen, but the players learn how to react to the situations. So football is not about only about coaching the situation. It's about coaching the reaction to the situation, which, in my opinion, is what makes the difference between a good team or a, a better team. Number 11, the video number 11. This is another session and I want to explain a bit this structure. So here we have one white team made by four defenders plus two midfielders against eight blue play attacking players. So this is not 11 against 11, but still is a related uh, a game related scenario session. The blue players must of course must score in the in the in the goal which uh, uh, is defended by a goalkeeper. The white players uh, have the, um, the target to score in the goal that is on the halfway line which is empty is an empty goal. So the the aim of this session is the blue blue players have to try and score uh, with the, our principles. No, nothing, nothing uh, different. If the players win the ball, they can score in the empty goal. So there is only one thing that the blue players can do to avoid this: try to press straight away when they lose the ball and avoid the white players to kick the ball freely. I will show a little bit, but in this specific video, the situation that I want to happen to, to, to coach in some way didn't happen because the white players made in four plus two make a, a fantastic defensive action and nothing happened to uh, related to what I want to coach but I don't care. In that moment my white players have learned or have improved in, uh, uh, in their defensive uh, uh, action. The blue players 
have understood that they sh they have to do better to to score, and nothing happened um, related to what I want to to coach. But after another uh, thirty seconds, we start again, restart, and something different happened. So once again, the blue, blue players try to build up, prepare the attack, always trying to keep the ball uh, as much as possible in, uh, in, uh, in the center area. If we can't find the center, we open the, the, um, the play. Now something happened. The blue players lost the ball. The white players win it. The blue players try to win it back, but the white players were so good to keep the ball in the way that we want to keep when we look when we win the ball in the deep areas that i'm happy with that because the players the, the all the players did something that wasn't expected but they did it well and this is the best thing we can uh, we can uh, hope in the coaching session technical tools and then we go quick uh, as, as i said before i work on technical uh, mm, improvement, but I work in a specific way. For, for me, in my opinion, for example, in this clip, uh, um, number 12, you can see two small groups in two small boxes with six players in the box plus two in the middle with a white bib uh, in their hands. One or two touches, no, no problem. Uh, small spaces, here the players have to work on their technical uh, abilities and this is a, a work for reaction. So there is no time to think for the players in possession. They just need to, to perceive the, the, the movement of the players in the middle and try to, to, to maintain the possession. And they work on their technical abilities because they have to touch it so they work on receiving, passing, and everything happened in a, in a split of a se second. This is, in my opinion, I do this and we do this every activation, every day, um, 15 to 20 minutes every day, every single session. It's like bread and butter for the players. Another nice and sometimes underrated tool for for uh, the technical improvement is the head tennis. I, I do this head tennis is a bit different. So uh, if you if you you have uh, many players, you, you can do this, and it's also good for uh, sprint and uh, endurance, sprint endurance, because you play with players that make this uh, three passes, bring, um, throw the ball the other side and uh, swap the position with the players outside. It's nice, it's um, funny for the players, it's uh, engaging for them and uh, it's also useful for the um, endurance, sprint endurance. And the more they keep the ball in play, the more they run. So they, they run and they don't realize they're running, but they're just uh, enjoying the, the, the game. And it's fantastic for the for the technical improvement because they touch the ball in every in every position and so on. Then talking about extra session activities, we have, as I said, Monday, every Monday or half an hour before the sessions, every session during the week, there are coaches who are uh, there specifically to work with one player or small group group of players to work on their uh, gaps, like in the video number 14 or video number 15, four or five players working in, uh, in small groups and the, the, the focus is more on the technical, technical aspect. This is video number 15, you can see this is my assistant who is working uh, with uh, four players four, five, five, five players. And this happened usually on Monday.
Okay. All this um, structure, so every single session is normal that uh, everything we do is involving, involving also these cognitive and emotional skills. And something is uh, um, coachable. Something is not, unfortunately, because insight in the, for the, uh, of the game is, is coachable. It's something that the players understand and, and learn uh, by coaching, by, by training and by playing. Like uh, the eye for the goal, creativity. Something else we can encourage, like fighting spirit, courage, selflessness, uh, reaction to mistakes. Unfortunately, or, or fortunately, some of these uh, skills are um, inbuilt in the players. We can't teach them. We can make the players understand the importance. But if a player has no personality, unfortunately, we, we can't do a lot. Um, I go quickly through this. Educational tools. Um, this is a, a, about what we do with the players after uh, or during the, the, the week uh, after the, the, the coaching sessions. So we do, for example, weekly meetings with the, with the, the whole team to analyze our previous games. Uh, and the players understand to analyze themselves, to self-evaluating. Uh, we do also individual video meetings with the single players to, to maybe to, to, because we spend more time to, to make a player understand some areas of improvement. We don't do an analysis of the opponents until they're under 18, because the, the club believes believe that the players have to, uh, uh, is part of, the, of their improvement to understand, uh, to read the opponents um, during the, the game itself. So we don't give information to the opponents, uh, to, to, the, to, the to, the play to our players about the opponents. And sometimes we, we do something that uh, we, we are doing, especially in this period. So I, I send the players a video of our games and I want them in small groups to analyze themselves, to analyze their own performance um, or analyze other games uh, to understand that, um, to learn how to read games, to learn how to understand the opponent's uh, game models. Uh, this is something I believe is important as well for the improvement of the players. Uh, the communication, I'm not spending a lot of time on this, but just to, to mention that uh, in our academy, we have a sort of keywords, uh, a set of keywords where the players of old ages know um, because we, we, we think that if a player, for example, in, uh, from under 16 um, come to train with me, with under 16, 17, he knows already what I'm talking about. I don't need to explain him some words um, because all the, 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 all the way through he has understood already the, the meaning of uh, these keywords. The last part, I am not talking about this strength and conditioning work because it's not my job and uh, basically I want to finish with this uh, sentence, which is, in my opinion, the 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 the, the, the key of uh, of all this uh, philosophy. So we we don't teach them how to climb a tree, but we take them to explore the woods, uh, which means we don't want to create players who um, have already solutions. Um, we have to to um, we have to make them understand how to uh, cope with every situation that can happen in football, because football is uh, unpredictable and uh, they can't just uh, have one or two solutions for everything, because the more they are able to read the, the, um, the game, the, the better will be as a, as a player and hopefully uh, make it the professional, the professional uh, football. Thank you. and. Uh, I will drink some water now. Sean. Thanks, Robert's here. Um, yeah, we have um, a few questions. Um, if we go into the Q&A section, there's a few. Are you able to access that yourself? Or do you want me to just send them across for you to answer? OK.
So we had a question from um, Magnus. The opposition is well structured and have closed down the central spaces. Do you rather like having much patience rather than to move the ball wide to open up the central spaces? Okay, nice, good, good question. And um, uh, the answer is, we want to keep the ball uh, in the central space because not because the, the aim is to make the opponent to close down the central space. Because if they squeeze in to close the central space, uh, playing with our um, wingers, so we, we give the chance to our wingers to, to have more space in the 1v1s, for example. So basically it's about creating, um, creating an opponent's behavior. So if we keep the ball uh, in the center of the field, what can happen, as Magnus said, is a, a, he's right, the opponents can close the space in the center and, of course, in that moment, if we can't find the space straight away through, we use the, the, the width of the pitch, but we can use the width of the pitch already high. So basically, the last pass will be to a winger and the winger can play a 1v1 and then from that we, we, can, we can build our, our action. Of course, if the opponents are not so organized, uh, we can go through uh, straight away by using the center, the central spaces. So it's always always about uh, reacting to to the opponent uh, to, to the opponent uh, behavior. Perfect, thank you. Um, and from Ready, in defensive transition, when winning the ball, is your sub principle to press the opponent? Cut the passing lanes, or is it a hybrid of both? Okay, um, basically, is about um, this is the the defensive transition is strictly strictly re related to what to how we build the attack. I mean, if we are bringing like we do usually, we bring a lot of players in the in the um, in the pre preparing the the attack. So in the last third. If we have a lot of players, the best thing to do is, if we lose the ball, to press straight away the opponent. One, and usually my players have this principle. The one who lost the ball, the one who lost the ball, is not the first to press. Because if he lost the ball, there will be one or two seconds where he is, mm, is not ready to press straight away forward. So basically the closest player is the one who give pressure straight away to the, the opponent who have won the ball. The others have to go and press the, um, the lean man. So the players, the opponent's players who are supporting. So the, the idea is to suffocate the opponent's counter attack. If we can do that, at least one player have to slow the opponent's the, the, the opponent with the ball to counter straight away and in that moment the uh, other the other players will try to uh, reshape and re regroup and defend start a second action defensive action a bit deeper on the field but depends on the situation there is not always um, one specific behavior uh, the players have to read and see okay we are many in the area of the ball we have to press, we have to win it back. If there is just one player around with the no teammates around, it's better to, to reshape. Perfect. And, um, and from Dwayne, how do you decide which part of the field you will focus on? If you are teaching non-possession plus positive transition, do you focus on the defensive third, middle third, or attacking third? Yeah, okay. Um, so, for example, if I, I'm, um, as I said, the second day of the, of the week, usually, uh, I always work on the defensive, um, so on the defensive uh, phase, but deeper on the field. So, let's say, uh, I, because not every time we can, we can win the ball high on the field, so I have to work um, on the back four, how to defend from from a cross from a, from a wide areas? Um, so basically, my idea is to to work on a, um, Wednesday, for example, deeper on the field. Friday, we is still defensive action, but is about pressing high. 
So there is a, yes, there is specific days and specific areas of the field where I, where I decide to, to coach. Um, and a question from Murray. Where and how does a player's lear individual learning plan fit within the game match day? I'm not sure, sorry, I'm not sure I understood. Where and how does a player individual learning plan fit within the game match day? Yeah, so if you play uh, so an extended period of a development plan for a single player, how do you, how do you incorporate that into like game match day? Yeah, no, match plan? If I understood, sorry, because sometimes my English is, uh, is not that uh, best. If I understood, Murray is asking if uh, the individual learning plan uh, is built uh, instructed uh, to um, to fit the the game. No, fit within the game match day. Mm, no, sorry, I didn't understood. If it's a matter of time timing, where when to to do that? I think it's um it's more to do with if a player has certain individual targets, individual goals, um, that they. Ah, okay, 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 maybe. Um, uh, so yes, yeah, okay. So let's say. Um, we realize that uh, a player um, is uh, um, is lacking a specific uh, skill. Let's say a winger is not using all the, the tools that a winger can use. For example, I have a specific player. I can tell you, there is a one player of my team who is uh, right-footed and he plays on the left. Okay, is always uh, trying every time he got the ball, he's always going inside, trying to beat his opponent. He never, use, he never uses his left to go and deliver maybe a cross in the box. So with this player, we try to work individually to um, uh, instill him in him the, the idea and to improve his left to make sure he can vary his, uh, his uh, type of game, of play. I, I think this was the the, 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 um, the meaning of the question. So we try to, to, to help the players to, to implement his skills to be used during the game. Yeah, I, th I think that was whatever reference. I hope Murray I, can I, clarify. I gave the right answer, sorry. <laughs> um, and I guess the last question before we um, close and then we'll, we'll get all these questions to Dr. Fabrizio who can give you a way to reach out to him to provide them. Um, Danny has asked, when speaking about state of reaction, specifically, yeah, yeah. what are you looking for from the player on the ball when attacking? Um, just can you elaborate on what you mean from this? Okay, no. Uh, this is exactly what we can't, um, we can't coach. I mean, uh, space of reaction, it means that uh, the player in that situation uh, is taking decisions that are unaware that they are not this is not something they can uh, they can um, reflect or think before the action so w the only thing the only thing we can do to to improve this uh, this uh, skill so to to react in the in the right way is during the training sessions to make him to make all the players cope with uh, the real reality of the game because if we only do, uh, we spend maybe in, a, we, we usually, so, so in this way I, I answer also to Murray, who asked how many minutes we, we, we train. We train tw um, two hours, but normally it, it's uh, still maybe uh, 100 minutes totally because with the rest and so on. But in, in two hours, my players work, let's say one hour and a half, in a game related scenario and just doing by doing this they will improve in the space of decisions and space of reaction because they can cope with everything if i want to structure a coaching session where the players have always the time to think what to do with no pressure with no intensity they will never be able to react when uh, the situation requires to do it so that is the uh, we can't ask the player to elaborate. Uh, um, I I can think 
I can see if a player is not reacting the, in the right way. So I have to be good and creating the, the, the better, better conditions for him to improve. Because this is only about the uh, attacking, because every single situation, defensive situation, every single defensive situation is all about decisions. Even the, the defender in a 1v1 can, can decide, because if I am the defender and uh, I'm uh, facing a, an opponent with the ball, I can think and I can decide if I'm good enough where to go, where to force him to go with the ball if you know what I mean. So uh, all the defensive situations are about decisions. All the, uh, not all, but a lot, uh, most of the time attacking situations are about reactions. This is my opinion. Perfect. Um, so I guess that's where we'll, we'll have to wrap up. Um, if you have any other questions, please feel free to get them into us and we can, we can pass them across the appropriate here and you can answer them if you get the opportunity. Um, so from my perspective, thank you all for joining us. Um, I hope you, th you found this as interesting and beneficial as, as I certainly did. And to Fabrizio, thank you so much again for taking the time to thank do this. You, uh, thank you again. And uh, if anyone uh, would like to contact me for uh, information or uh, um, details, more details or questions that uh, I couldn't answer now, feel free to do it. Uh, you can give my email address to, to the, the attendants and I will be more than pleased to to, um, to to chat and to Perfect. share. I will do that and I will also um I'll copy in your your Twitter handle so people can shoot you a quick message on there if they would like to. Um thank you guys um and see you on Thursday all of you registered. Steve McLaren is going to be joining us, the um, former England manager. Um he'll be coming in at noon on US Central Time, 6 p.m. UK time. So if you haven't registered yet and you'd like to join us, please do so. There's still are some spaces available. Um, and we will see you all then. Thank you guys. Thank you, Fabrizio. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye. Cheers.